Hello and welcome back to another episode of Immunology, The War Is Over, Season 2. In this episode, we're going to be getting up close and personal with an immune cell that is beyond fascinating, introducing my new friend, the natural killer cell. Technically, natural killer cells, or NK cells, are lymphocytes. They have lymphoid origin and are created in the same bone marrow production line as B cells and T cells. But that's where the similarities end. They don't go to Thymus Academy, they don't have CD4 or CD8 markers on their surface, and they don't have perfectly matched antigens for their receptors. And whilst they're not complicated or sophisticated, they are fascinating. Natural killer cells, as the name suggests, have the ability to kill cells and they do this in a very similar way to cytotoxic T cells. They use their granules containing noxious agents to inflict cell death. And they do this in two specific circumstances. The first is antibody dependent cytotoxicity. So if an antibody is bound to a cell and a natural killer cell just happens to swing by and see that antibody, it will get in there and destroy that cell. The second circumstance in which NK cells do their thing is the detection of stress signals on the cell surface. These stress signals might be due to infection but can also occur in tumour cells. A particular stress signal that gets NK cells fired up is the absence of MHC1 molecules. And this is a stark contrast from cytotoxic T cells. You may remember that cytotoxic T cells are looking for MHC1 molecules on the cell surface. In fact, they depend on it. That MHC1 molecule is holding out a very specific antigen which this T cell will react to. So CD8 T cells need to see the MHC1 and antigen together in order to go ahead and destroy that cell. And this is the typical immune response to intracellular pathogens such as viruses. But viruses have been around for a long time and some have developed the ability to reduce MHC1 expression on the cell surface. And in doing so, they can fly under the radar. But Mother Nature caught wind of this, and she was having none of it. She too evolved and installed a very clever backup system known as the natural killer cell. These little guys were designed to kill cells that don't express sufficient MHC1 on their surface. In fact, they find this lack of MHC1 rather suspicious and take it upon themselves to destroy that cell. And in this way, the natural killer cell is the ultimate backup for the cytotoxic T cell. Let's unpack this in a little more detail. On the surface of the NK cell, there are various receptors designed to look for stress signals as well as MHC1 molecules. The actions of the NK cell will be guided by the balance of these two signals. The stress signals are the on switch, whilst the MHC1 molecules are the off switch. So if a cell has stress signals on the surface, the NK cell will wander up to have a squiz. But as he wanders up, he checks in with the MHC1 molecules. If there are plenty of MHC1 molecules on the surface, this implies that even if something is going on inside that cell, the cytotoxic T cell can probably handle it, so there's no need for the NK cell to get involved. If, on the other hand, the natural killer cell detects stress signals, but on closer inspection there are minimal MHC1 molecules on the cell surface, it knows that the T cells are going to struggle to find this cell and take action. So the NK cell takes the matter into his own hands, he will go ahead and destroy that cell. Meanwhile, he'll call for backup. NK cells secrete cytokines which promote a Th1 response, which is perfect for intracellular organisms. So whilst the NK cells are killing these suspicious cells, they're also sending out a cytokine bat signal that's going to promote the adaptive immune response in the area. So for NK cells, the decision to get involved is about the balance between the stress signals 
or the on switch, and the MHC1 molecules, the off switch. And so we see how magical this is, right? In situations where viruses or cancer cells have mutated to a place where they can now evade T-cell detection, natural killer cells can swoop in and overcome the problem. Amazing, right? Thank you, Mother Nature. You really thought about this. But despite everything I've just said about the magical abilities of NK cells, it's interesting that people without NK cells appear entirely normal. They don't seem to succumb to viral infections or tumours necessarily. And so in that sense, NK cells are not essential to the immune system, but rather they are a fabulous bonus. And whilst they are a bonus, they're not a magic bullet. As much as I would like to portray the story where mother nature wins and viruses lose, the truth is that some viruses have evolved to get around both NK cells and cytotoxic T cells. And this is annoyingly clever. As you are likely aware, our MHC1 molecules come in several forms, A, B and C. T cells primarily interact with HLA A and B, and to a lesser extent, C. And here lies a loophole for viruses. One virus which takes advantage of this loophole is the HIV virus. It can upregulate HLA class C molecules and place them on the cell surface. So now there are lots of MHC1 molecules on the surface, which have the ability to inhibit NK cells, while simultaneously flying under the T-cell radar. So when it comes to HIV, neither the CD8 T-cell nor the NK cell have the upper hand. And another cheeky little virus is CMV, cytomegalovirus. CMV generates a molecule known as UL18, which mimics MHC1. So it looks a lot like MHC1, and has the ability to inhibit natural killer cells, but T cells don't recognize it. Well played, CMV. Well played. Now, pesky little viruses aside, the natural killer cell is still pretty awesome. As well as being able to kill stress cells, which could be tumors or infected cells, they also kill fellow immune cells, and in this way, they play a regulatory role, keeping the immune response in check. And a surprising place you'll find natural killer cells is in the process of reproduction. Did you know that trophoblast invasion is facilitated by natural killer cells? Apparently, the little trophoblasts use their HLA molecules to interact with NK cells and request their help in invading the uterine wall. And in doing so, this tag team get the pregnancy up and running. Who knew? And so that was Natural Killer Cells, a fabulous immune system bonus. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I hope it helped your studies. And before you go, I wanted to let you know about my brand new series, Transplant Immunology Peace Talks Begin. If you've been enjoying Immunology The War Is Over, this is the natural next step. In this series, we completely demystify histocompatibility, Eplets and epitopes, molecular typing, cross matching, rejection, immunosuppression, and so much more. If that sounds like something you need in your life, then click the link for all the juicy details. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you again soon for some more high yield learning. Bye!